and storytelling with me, Owen Staten. The wheel of the year turns round and round, slowly but surely, heading us into darkness. The winter is coming. The spring is far off. The nights grow dark and cold. But now is the time of stories. So sit back, relax, let your mind clear of all the cares and worries that you have carried with you like a burden all week, and let a tale traditionally told wash your mind clean. Halloween, Kalangayav is not far away, a place where tales are told of ghosts and spirits, of witches, warlocks and creatures of the night. This is ghost story season at the time between times. So join me, walk through the forest, find that clearing in the heart of the woods where the fire pit slowly burns. Look around and see the faces of friends as they join us here. The fire splutters. Far away we can hear the howl of wolves, the growl of bears, but we know we are safe right here at the time between times, the time when the veil between our world and the fairy world grows wafer, wafer thin, so thin that for just a few moments we can reach out into their realm and for a few moments they can reach into ours. Now is the time that people see the Telwith Teg. Now is the time that people see ghosts. Now is the time that people see lights in the sky. Now is the time for a tale so chilling that you may want to leave the lights on. Long ago and far away in a place called Marvod in the north of Wales, windswept in winter, there lies Roft Hall, an old stone manor house torn and sundered by storms across the centuries. It was home to the Blackbourne family for many, many years. Margaret Blackbourne and Edward Blackbourne. They owned all the houses of the estate around them and the village of Marvod. Surrounded by woods and forest, it's a beautiful and stark place. But there, be it summer, spring or winter, Margaret and Edward would sit, and all visitors to Marvard would play homage to them as lord and lady. Margaret was quiet, kind and gentle. She would often give money to the poor. She would often pick flowers and give them to those who passed. But she was a kindly soul. Edward was a different matter. He had married into the family. Margaret's father had once been lord of Marvard, and now Edward, above his station, had married into this family, and that weighed heavily upon him. What few people know, and less even guessed, down in the village he had a lover. Her name was Elspeth Thorne, the daughter of a miller, a poor miller, but a pretty daughter. And as the moon stretched and shined in the sky, Edward would make his way down to the river to meet with Elspeth to make love under the stars. Nobody knew this dark secret. And one day, Elspeth met with him and told him news he did not want. She was with child, but if he did not marry her, she would reveal this fact to everyone. Edward's heart, his black heart, beat ever louder, for he knew that if this secret was to come out, he would be ruined. He would be cast from the Blackburn family. He would be cast out and poor. He stood to lose everything. That night he returned to Roft Hall, walked through the oaken door and sat in the great hall. He looked around, the fireplace burnt. There, amongst the portraits of his ancestors, he brooded as the night grew long and knew that there was something he must do in order to make sure that he remained the Lord of Marvel. The next morning, as the sun started to shine, he picked flowers from the garden and went to awaken his wife, Margaret. He opened the door and told her, My love, 
come with me, for today the sun will shine, and before the winter comes upon us, let us have a picnic. Let us sit together in the forest, amongst the trees. This was unusual, and Margaret did not know what to think, but she went along with her husband. He took her on a horse deep into the forest, where there was an old oak that had stood there for centuries. An oak with a trunk like a gnarled face, surrounded by flowers in a dark but crystal clearing. They sat as Edward pulled out a blanket, placed it on the ground and brought out food, drink. There, almost in silence, they sat and they ate, Margaret singing under her voice and Edward staring into the distance. As the food had finished, Margaret leaned forward to kiss her husband. It was then that he did a truly dark deed. Under his coat he pulled forth a small dagger and stabbed his wife under her ribs. With her last breath she went to speak to him, to ask him why, but then faded and fell to the ground. Edward dug a shallow grave under the old oak. He looked down, his coat was covered in blood. His mind was raging, but he felt his secret was now safe and he was free to marry Elspeth Thorne. Taking the horse, he walked back through the village of Marvel, through the forest, into the village street, round the old inn, through the estate cottages, and up the pathway to Roft Hall. As he walked, all the villagers stepped out to Marvel, to look, to gaze at their lord covered in blood who returned home that day. None dared ask him why he was dressed this way. None did dare ask him why this continence had come upon him. He returned to Roft Hall and soon put out a proclamation that his wife had died suddenly he was to marry once more. The people of Marwood gossiped. The people of Marwood talked all about this, and many of them guessed what had happened, but none dared challenge. The day of the wedding came. The local church was packed by well-wishers. Edward and Elspeth spent their first night in Roft Hall. Happy, but Edward's dark deed weighed upon him like a weight. That night, past the time between times, the time when it is neither night nor day, but the sun has gone and the sky is grey. The new couple lay down in their bed to sleep. But not far away, a new journey was beginning. It was Lady Blackbourne. Margaret Blackbourne rose from her grave. Her spirit sat up under the old oak, glowing under the moonlight, terrible in aspect, beautiful as the dawn. She glided through the clearing, through the woodland paths, till she came to the outskirts of Marvel. She was as white as the sky on a summer's day. She shone brightly, but there was a darkness about her. Every house that her husband had passed, every house that dared not challenge the dark deed he had done that day, Margaret strode up and tapped on the window. The families looked up from their food, looked up from their dinners, and saw this vengeful spirit staring through the glass back at them, her eyes as deep as the ocean. Every family was terrified. Past the old inn, through the estate cottages, and up the pathway of Roft House. Through the oak door, up the great staircase, past the portraits that went on for centuries, 
till she came to the bedroom. It was then that she went through the door and stood at the bottom of the bed with a new couple sleeping in before her. They awoke suddenly and sat bolt upright to see the spirit of Lady Blackbull staring at them. The next morning, both Edward and Elspeth were found dead. Their hair turned totally white. It is said that they had died of fright. The servants do of Sud moved out of Roft Hall, and the people of the village were terrified. Every house that he had passed, every house that did not challenge his dark deed, every night received a visit from Margaret Blackball, tapping on the glass, staring in at them. People soon moved out if they could, for all were fearful of who now became known as Lady Blackbird. Years later, a local priest, desperate to rid the town of Marvod of this spirit, performed an exorcism and asked every one of the people living there to place a cross in all the downstairs windows to stop the spirit peering through. Many of those crosses are still there today. It is only them that keep the spirit of Lady Blackbird at bay. But it is said still that the old oak in the heart of the forest, she walks the path as if to gather flowers and makes her way towards Roft Hall. Woe be told anyone who removes the cross from the window, for she will stare through the glass terrify all within. And that, my friends, is the dark tale of Lady Blackbird. I hope you've enjoyed this time of the time between times. It is time well spent when you listen to a tale. For those of you who might know, I have a podcast called Time Between Times Storytelling, which is available wherever you get your podcasts. It's an audio version of these tales, longer without having to see my face. I now have an account on Kofi, K-O-F-I, Kofi. So if anyone wishes to buy me a coffee, you're more than welcome. And I still have badges available, a new stock of badges, Time Between Times badges. Please like and subscribe these videos and tell me exactly what you thought of the tale, for sometimes telling tales through a screen is a very lonely job indeed. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. Next week, there will be another ghostly tale as we head into Halloween. But in the meantime, take care. Diochen Mawr. Nostar.